Someone said feminism came from Muslim men treating Muslim women badly, not Islam. So no, that's, that's actually like incorrect on many levels, like historically, because it was in the 19th century that the first wave of feminism started, and it started, I think it was in Eastern America, I think it was New York actually specifically. So feminism didn't have anything to do with Islam or the mosques, as it mentioned. Uh, feminism started, um, it, was, it was a pro, listen, you have to understand something. Feminism, feminism is an attempt to solve a Western problem. Feminism is an attempt to solve a Western problem. We never had this issue. The Prophet ﷺ came and he placed men and women on the same playing field in terms of the sanctity of their lives and their values. Okay? Women weren't allowed to be able to hold property, to own land, to inherit. We never had these issues. Islam, it made men and women, it made them, it leveled the playing field for them. I'm saying in Europe, 11th, 12th century, they were still trying to work out, does the woman even have a soul? Is she even a human being? Okay? Then a couple centuries later, women had the right to inherit. Women had the right to own property. Women had the right to own land. So there was inherent injustice and oppression that was there in Western society. So feminism came to try and solve that problem. Does that make sense? Now, that's not me turning a blind eye to certain cultural practices that take place back home in our countries. And we're from a diverse, you know, kind of background. Some of you might be North African, Middle Eastern, East African, West African, Central African, Central Asian, South Asian, East Asian. We're from different parts. We're all from all over. And each one of us has cultural baggage that kind of comes to the table. I'll tell you something. Every time that cultural baggage comes, it never came from Islam. You know where it comes from a lot of the time? It comes from the non-Muslim cultural influences of that region. I'll give you an example. I'm Pakistani. I'm from Pakistan. Okay? Pakistan used to originally be what? India. So Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, reading treaty is what? It's India. So when I talk about Pakistan, I'm bringing India into this, I'm bringing Bangladesh into this. All of us are in the same, pa in the same page. Does that make sense? Good. So Pakistanis, Indians, and Bengalis have a problem, culturally speaking, they don't treat women very well, do they? It's, it's not nice the way you guys get treated, right? I know, it's okay. We're, uh, we're, uh, it's one of the things that burns me till today. But where did this come from? This came from Hindu practices. It came from Hindu, pra Hindu practices, where men and women, religiously speaking, were not on the same wavelength. For them, they, like for example, till today, do you know, a common, do you know there's a practice in India called, called burning brides? Burning brides. Do you know what it is? Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of women every year die because they get burnt alive after their wedding. You know we have a concept in our religion called mahar. What's mahar? Mahar is dowry, right? This is a woman's right. No man has a right to take it away from her. She can ask for whatever she wants. She shouldn't make it extortionate because then no, really, really no guy's going to marry you because they're going to look and say, listen sister, you're asking for a meal, but are you worth a meal? I don't know. But she keep it reasonable, you know what I'm saying? But she can ask what she wants. She can say, I want a Lamborghini. She can say, I want what? She can say, I want a Kinder Bueno. No problem. She can ask whatever she wants. But in India, in Indian practices, in Indian practices, the woman has to give dowry to the man. The woman has to give dowry to the man. I believe they call it Jehez. Have you guys heard of that? They call it Jehez. And certain Pakistanis adopt this practice. Now, what do they do? When a woman doesn't pay that, and sometimes it's extortionate amounts. Like the same way, some of our parents, they say, look, if, if a guy wants to marry you, they say he's to put 10, 20K down, right? That guy, he skin doesn't have the ability to work. Of course, this woman, woman's not going to be able to earn it, right? Usually it comes from her dad, and the dad has three, four daughters. He has to pay what? Extortionate amounts for each one of his daughters as a wedding gift to the groom. When they don't manage to pay up, they pour oil over the woman and they burn her alive. Wallahi, just look it up, Google it. It's called burning brides. It is a huge problem in that region of the world. And that's just one example of... Like the lack of respect for women. You've all heard of the, the, uh, the, the rape phenomenon in that region. And the way it's just soaring through the roof and so on and so forth. That's because that part of the world, culturally speaking, they never respected women. And because our Muslims lived in those regions, 
Muslims still live in India today, Pakistan, Bangladesh, because of being in close proximity, living with them for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, they adopted some of those mentalities. Does that make sense? So it never came from Islam. Even when it came back home, it never came from the Muslims. Does that make sense? The burning bride thing is just one example I gave you. The rape was the second one. There's many other examples. I'm not trying to go off too much of, into a tangent, because you can probably see when I start going off on a tangent, I'll go right, left, fly over the Caribbean, take a stop in Hawaii, come back, sip some tea in the UK, go for it. Like me, I'll go all around the world. So I'm going to stop it there, inshallah ta'ala. But the point is that this problem, it never came from Islam. Does that make sense? Brothers and sisters, I need your attention for just one minute. Our brothers around the world, they need help. Some of them, if they don't get food and water to drink, they are going to die. And then there's others, like those who are back home, who live on the same streets as us. And if they don't get help in terms of spiritual help, they might lose their faith. Now, both those whose lives are in danger and whose faith are in danger, they both need to be helped. But I want to explain to you the repercussions of not helping both of them. You see, if you don't help those who are suffering when it comes to starvation, at least when they die, they will die Muslims. And all that they will leave or all that they will lose at the end is their life of this world. But like, if you don't help those brothers and sisters who are struggling in terms of their faith, if they die, then they might actually lose their afterlife and potentially be entered into the hellfire for a period of time, if not eternity. For that reason, it's important that we don't neglect these, these brothers. For that reason, we started up a project called Umrah with Amanda, where we take brothers and sisters from around the world, specifically the UK, specifically London, and we take them with us and we set up a program that facilitates for them to change. We also provide them support for when they return. And we always select a handful of brothers who can't afford it themselves. And this time we have taken on board more people without paying anything than we ever have before. And we are in urgent need of their costs being covered. So if you would like to help facilitate towards someone's life changing, then please go to the link below inshallah ta'ala and donate generously. Remember, if they change their life, then you're actually helping them, inshallah ta'ala, be a part of saving their afterlife. And in terms of reward, then any good that they do from this point onwards, if they change because of your donation and you're sincere, then you're going to get all that reward as well. So on the Day of Judgment, you get this mountain of good deeds, prayers, charity, fast, all this stuff that you've never done. But why did it come your way? Because you facilitated with Allah's permission for someone to make change. And then when he changed, he or she did all of these things. And now that reward is all on your scales on a day of judgment. So please, brothers and sisters, be as generous as you can. Go to the link below, donate like crazy. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.